Welcome to the Purpose Chasers Podcast. I'm your host, Mark Crandall. In 2015, I dreaded most of my day-to-day life. I was working unfulfilling jobs, wasting time playing video games, binging on TV, just to get my mind off the fact that I had a calling to do more and to be more. For years, I wanted to write a book, to become a paid speaker, and to empower others to achieve their dreams. In 2016, I took a stand. I invite you now to do the same. As Purpose Chasers, we refuse to settle for average. We chase our dreams, we accomplish our goals, and we support, encourage, and challenge our community to create the lives we want to live. Why have we Purpose Chasers taken this stand? Because life is too short to not live fulfilled. Enjoy this episode and take action. Purpose Chasers, welcome back to the Purpose Chasers podcast. I'm full of gratitude this morning as I record this episode. So this is the kickoff episode of a new insight that I have had as a result of hearing you, the Purpose Chasers. And the insight that has come to me based off the feedback that you, my family, my people, my Purpose Chasers have provided me with is you want to hear me talk more about business. You want me to bring on more guests to talk about how to increase your following and how to get more engagement on social media and how to do email marketing and like how they scaled their business or how they started a a side hustle while they were still working. I hear you, I hear you, and I am excited. Why am I excited? Because I love nothing in this world other than my family and maybe bass fishing more than talking about business. I absolutely love entrepreneurship. I love the journey of shaping and molding and changing and growing and succeeding and failing. I just love the mental gymnastics that go on inside of business. And so I hear you, and I got excited Sunday and Monday and Tuesday as I was mapping out the content that I was going to share, and this is really the first episode of this new uh, trajectory that we're headed on, and I have some epic humans on the calendar to interview, and I have some awesome topics that I'm going to be dropping on you. Funny story, and I don't think you Purpose Chasers even know this. My favorite thing to do in business is sales. Why? Because I don't view sales as sales. I view them as an opportunity to build a relationship and find out how I can fit the product or service into their life to solve a problem. I don't view it as a dollar sign. I view it. But that's another episode that I'm going to talk about that, how to sell without being a scumbag. Very, very excited for the trajectory that the Purpose Chasers podcast is headed on. And I hope you enjoy this episode in which I talk about masterminding and the necessity for you to stop trying to look good. I've been a part of several masterminds. I've spent a lot of money on my personal development. And I had a couple very poor experiences with masterminds from uh, whether that was crappy leadership or ego inside of the mastermind. And something really came up for me on this call and there was about 20 individuals on the call uh joining the you know that had joined the mastermind or were uh participating in their 30-day free trial which if you don't know that you can get access to our mastermind uh at the entry level for 30 days to check it out and One of the disclaimers that I gave before, so we have a a kind of a unique format that we use. We break individuals out into small groups and we give them topics and discussions. And the disclaimer that I laid before Justin and I broke the individuals in the mastermind out into the groups was don't try to fucking look good. And that comes from my experience of individuals sitting in masterminds or in any coaching capacity, really wanting to look good and really wanting to shine and wanting to be a know-it-all and wanting to provide insights to everyone. And my experience and my opinion is that's not how to show up in a mastermind or in your circle of influence, if you will. That's just not how to show up. You don't need to have your shit together. You 
you don't need to pretend like everything is going good. And the disclaimer that I gave was the more vulnerable and authentic you can get right out of the gate, the more you're going to take away from this experience. And I just started to reflect on how many individuals that show up in these or show up with, you know, for coaching with me or show up in the academy, they really want to appear good. And I've had several experiences of individuals that have joined the academy and gone through the academy that in the beginning, they wanted to appear or act as if there was going to be lower level individuals surrounding them. And here's a newsflash. They may be a little below the path that you're on, uh, but the only reason why there's an identification that they're a little bit behind you is because they were willing to get authentic. And the question that I posed to kick this mastermind session off was, what is your number one struggle right now? And I wanted to get through, and there were a couple people that still try, you know, kind of shined their number one struggle and and made themselves out to be greater than they were, which really, I believe, defeats the purpose of what it is that a mastermind can be. And the end result of this call was individuals walked away with tangible actions that they were going to take. They got super authentic. They're building community. The, you know, the private Facebook group started popping off immediately after the call. They're getting each other to go follow, you know, follow them on Instagram. And will you share my content out? And we went through the give and the ask and really, really started to build community centered around here's where I'm at and let's help each other. And so the topic that I wanted to discuss off of that, as I was reflecting on that, is why do we have a sense or a yearning or a feeling that we always need to uh, look good? Why can't we get authentic and really share where we're at? And I've had several individuals that have been on the fence around joining, you know, joining the academy. And there was hesitation because they thought that, you know, they might be further than And the end result of it was they had, you know, this revolutionary shift in their thoughts, thinkings in their business and just some epic outcomes once they're able to get vulnerable. And so to start the mastermind off, I challenge individuals to set aside everything they think they know about themselves, about masterminds, about personal development so they can have a new experience with authenticity and personal growth. And man, what that has done for me, I couldn't even I couldn't even tell you in a, in a podcast episode, you would stop listening because I would be ranting on and on and on. When I go into a coaching session or when I go into master a mastermind that I'm a part of or even when I'm on a call with Justin, my partner in the Purpose and Movement Mastermind, even when I get on a call with him, it's I try to be as authentic as I possibly can be, right? Because I don't need to, the only reason why I would need to appear better than Justin or better than my coach is some place of insecurity. It's it's insecurities within me that are causing me to think, feel, and act in a way that I appear greater than to validate some internal insecurities. And it's just not necessary. So stop trying to look good. You don't need to look good. The the most epic humans that I know started their trajectory of growth based off authenticity. And I have a couple high, high level, you know, multimillionaires that I could call right now and ask them what their number one struggles are. And they would they would fire them off immediately right? Because it's it's knowing what they are, making friends with them and being open to share them that are going to allow you to grow beyond where you currently at, where you currently at. I'm just making, making, uh, or creating poor sentences. So the challenge that I have for you is to stop trying to look good. The other challenge that I have or offer, if you will, it's not a challenge, it's an offer, is if you haven't signed up, for a trial of the Purpose and Movement Mastermind, go over to purposeandmovementmastermind.com and fill out the little survey and jump on a call with either Justin or I or Justin and I and find out if this is a fit for you. With that being said, I just want you to reflect on how often are you trying to look good in opportunities where you could really overcome what you were stuck in. 
And my experiences in the piece that I absolutely love about being a purpose chaser and being an entrepreneur is the constant struggle, the constant growth, right? So individuals that are inside the Facebook community at the purpose chasers, they know my number one struggle is the, the amount of time that I've been working. And they know that because I was on a live with them and Megan came down, my wife came down with little man and I allowed the community to ask one question. The first question that got fired off is like, what's the hardest thing about being married to Mark? And, and Megan straight up said uh, he works 60 to 80 hours a week sometimes. And I had to stop in that moment. I didn't justify or defend or, or dismiss. I had to stop in that moment and ask myself, is that true? And it is. And then I reflected on it and I shared it with, you know, with my coach and, and with a couple other people close to me, Justin being one of them. And I, and I reflected and I was actually talking with my friend Phoebe last night about it. And I reflected, that's not why I launched my business in the first place. My original goal for launching my business and in writing a book and doing the coaching obviously was to empower others to achieve their goals, which has now become the Purpose Chasers brand, you, my family. But it was originally so that I could I could have unlimited three day weekends. And I'm smiling as I say that I love Fridays off. I just do. I love the idea of like being able to end my week on a Thursday and taking Friday, Saturday and Sunday off. And I've gotten away from that. Right. And so it's just the the ability to be more authentic. Purpose Chasers, really grateful to have you in this Purpose Chasers community to be a part of this. If you have any topics or guests that you think would be of absolute benefit to you, I hear you. We are talking about business. We are talking about purpose chasing, how to actually chase the purpose. I have talked obsessively about limiting beliefs and how to overcome them. You guys have heard me and gals have heard me talk nonstop about it. Now let's start talking about getting into real action. Let's launch a side hustle. Let's launch your book. Let's do the things. Let's get out there and create the lives of our dreams. I want to thank you for being a part of the Purpose Chasers community and invite you to seek the support that allowed me to take my stand towards creating the life of my dreams. Join our exclusive members-only Facebook group at The Purpose Chasers. Also, follow us on all social media platforms at The Purpose Chasers. Until we connect again, remember to live your life like it's the only one you have because your dreams should never be on hold.